Hello and welcome. I am Kapil Vaswani and I work with the Rigorous Software Engineering Group at Microsoft Research India. And today I am going to talk to you about a new debugging tool called Homes, which we have been working on for about the last year or so. So as we all know, debugging is the process of going from the symptom of a bug or a software failure to its root cause. And this process is extremely time consuming, it is very manual and very tedious. And typically the way this is done is by trying to reproduce a bug in your test environment by launching the application inside a debugger and stepping through it one statement at a time and trying to figure out where the cause of this failure is. And this process, like I described, is very manual and very tedious. So we started out with the Homes project with the goal of trying to automate this process as much as possible. The way Homes works is very different from a conventional debugger. Uh, what Homes does is that it analyzes data that's typically present in the software development lifecycle. For example, Homes will look at test data, data collected from test cases, both passing and failing test cases, and from the version control system to try and find out what parts of code might be causing these failures. So let me show you how Homes works with a very quick demo. So to do this demo, we are going to use an application that we got of CodePlex. It's an application that already comes with about 500 odd test cases. But let's consider a scenario where you already have this application, you've made a bunch of changes over a period of time, and you suddenly find that some of these test cases start failing. So let's run these test cases. Because of the changes, there are about 50 test cases out of the 500 that you find are now failing. So typically what you'd have to do to fix, diagnose and fix these failures is that you'd have to look at each failing test case for example, you look at this test case, it, it tells you where um, an exception happened. You can look at the test details and find out what the exception actually was. And you'd have to do that for every single failing test case and try and find out what's causing these failures. So this whole process is obviously very manual and very tedious. To use Homes to do this debugging, the first thing you have to do is to configure Homes to collect uh, data when the tests are being run. So the way you do that is by going to the Tools menu selecting the Homes option, and selecting Configure Homes. Select a set of projects that you want to instrument. So these are all projects you think might contain the bug. So when you enable Homes instrumentation, it will go ahead and reload your project once. And once these projects are reloaded, all you have to do is just build your application just as you build it normally, and then run tests again, just as you run your test normally. So we'll do that, which is build the application once. Once the build finishes, we just run all the tests again. But the difference is that this time Homes is monitoring each test case, both passing tests and failing tests, and collecting data that will use eventually to diagnose these failures. And in fact, if you this time if you open a test case, you'll find that there is this data attached with every test case. It doesn't make a lot of sense now. This is a just a bunch of numbers. But this is the data that Homes is going to use to try and find the, the cause of these failures. So the way you run a Homes analysis is again by going to the Tools menu, bringing up the homes, homes window, and say that you want to launch a new analysis. And you select a bunch of options. In this case, I'll select a test run that I just recently did, and just say Analyze. And what Homes is doing in the background is it's reading all that test data that we saw, and it's trying to find code paths in your application that it thinks are causing all these failures. So in this case, Homes comes back to us with two results, with these two rows, uh, with this table, where each row corresponds to a potential root cause. So what Homes is in fact telling you is that there are 50 failures in this application, but it turns out that there are potentially only two root causes. So you already see that a big benefit. Uh, what you can do is you can launch, uh, double click on each of these root causes, and what Homes will show you is highlighted in, in red exactly those lines of code, a code path in your application such that if a test case exercises this code path, then it tends to fail, right? So in this case, there is a code path that goes through a specific case statement that Homes thinks is the problem. What Homes also shows you is a bunch of statistics with every root cause. So in this case, if you hover your mouse over the confidence bar, what Homes will tell you is that this code path highlighted in red was exercised in zero successful test cases, but in 11 failing test cases, which sort of tells you that it, it's a very buggy code path, right? 
Now, it's up to you as a developer to ask yourself why is it that every time this code path is exercised, your application tends to fail. And in this specific case, uh, it turns out that there is a missing push statement. So if you look at the case statement above this specific case, you'll find that there's a push. In the one that is highlighted by Holmes, there is no push statement. So let me just add a push statement here. And once you've done your fix, you just rebuild your application again. And then you can run the test to validate whether your fix is correct. The time consuming portion of having to find where the cause of the bug is, is no longer there. All you have to do is ask yourself why a certain piece of code is likely to be causing these failures. So we'll just run the test again. And this time round, if your fix is correct, you'll find that you have much smaller number of failures. In this case, we've eliminated 13 failures because we had the right fix. Let's now consider a slightly different scenario where you don't have enough test cases. It turns out that if you use Holmes as it is, it might not be able to find the real root cause. But it turns out this, you can use Holmes in a slightly different way to actually uh, give you root causes even when you don't have a lot of test cases. And you can do this if you have a previous stable build of your application. So the way you, you do that is by launching Holmes again. You, you launch a new analysis. And this time, you can specify a previous baseline build. So in this case, I have a bunch of builds. And you can select one, a previous build that you know is reasonably stable. And if you specify this build, it turns out that we often don't need so many test cases to give you very accurate root causes. So just to summarize, what I've just shown you is a new debugging tool called Holmes. It's a very unconventional statistical approach to debugging. What Holmes does is that it looks at test, test data collected from lots of test runs and data collected from the version control system to try and automatically find the causes of failures. As a secondary effect, Holmes also gives you this benefit of bucketing test failures into root causes so that you don't have to file a separate bug report for every failure. Holmes is available as a download today from research.microsoft.com slash Holmes. So feel free to download it and give us feedback from the, from the forums. Holmes actually works both with tests in the Microsoft Test Framework and with uh, the Microsoft Test Manager. So thank you for watching and happy debugging.